And this is from Geeks Tech. So what I would say, Geeks Tech, is for 5,000 pesos, I'm whatever you want me to be, baby. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Hi Moncabano, Chris here. Time for Q&A, where I take my favorite questions and comments from all of you over the last week or so and make a vlog about it. Let's get straight into the action. So the first one I have this week is, Hi Chris, I just subscribed. Are you also a chef for hire? And this is from Geeks Text. So what I would say, Geeks Text, is for 5,000 pesos, I'm whatever you want me to be, baby. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I currently am not doing like official chef for hire stuff. There are a few select cabanos who have tried my cooking. I do cooking demos at the moment, uh, particularly in related to my wine business. I think you guys know that I run Winery Philippines, which you can check out winery.ph. And when I'm doing that though, it's usually less cooking and more on food and wine pairing. So often I'm preparing tasting platters and talking to people about how to appreciate good wine with food because that's a passion of mine. But I do do a one or two event formats for some of our top wine customers where I'll just do a little bit of a cooking demonstration. So we might make something like my Colombian black bean rigatoni, for example, which is a really fascinating dish. And I'll just cook it, really simple style, home style cooking. You come over and I'm like, bang, here's how to make it. And I just plate it up and hand it to them. So I'm not doing those sort of sit down dinners but more, I suppose, entertaining where I might incorporate a cooking demonstration. You know, sometimes I'll just be like, hey, here's how to cook a steak. I'll just cook a couple of really nice steaks, slice them up, serve with some nice wine. So, you know, not for hire just yet. I have a very busy schedule, but if you do ever want to get along to a cooking demo, the best way is actually to become a wine drinker. <laughs> it's actually through my wine business that I'm doing a bit of cooking for some of our customers there. It's a goodwill thing and they enjoy it and it's really fun to do with the wine pairing. So check out that and check out some events there and I might be cooking near you soon. And if not for now, you may just need to keep watching the videos I do where I'm bringing my cooking to your home anyway. You can watch that from anywhere at home, on your computer at work. When you're on the MRT like this, watching on your phone, you can watch recipes there. Uh, but watch this space because I might change my mind about that in a few months, okay? So keep an eye out. Now, Gerald Salas writes, I'm really hoping Nasana Magayana Din Yung Mag Convenience Stores Japan. And my huge array of different packed meals and nakalagay sa freezer. Tapos kukuhan ka lang and pwede ipainit sa cashier lady. Not sure kung mga healthy na yun kung araw na kanon. So for the non-Tagalog speakers watching, what Gerald is saying is that in Japan, the convenience stores have a big selection of frozen foods and you buy them and they'll actually just have them keep it in the store for you by the cashier. They'll just microwave it for five minutes and give it to you and it's ready to eat. Okay, so generally speaking, anything that is made, processed, manufactured in a factory environment, in order to be preserved, it's normally have to go through a process that will inevitably kill a lot of the flavor and nutrients compared to eating fresh vegetables. So the first thing to say is it will always be a healthier option to cook with fresh real ingredients from scratch period. I am a realist that in the modern economy, it's harder to get fresh vegetables than it was when it was an agrarian or hunter-gatherer society. Like you live in a city, there's not like a book in next door where you can like pick fresh beans and eat them off the plant. So I acknowledge the fact that in the 21st century, more meals are going to be convenience and mass produced. And there are better and better producers of those. So I think, you know, when those first came out, they were largely pretty crappy, but I think the quality is actually getting better. And there are companies now focusing on making you know, high quality meals and then freezing them in the way I actually would cook like a really good soup. I make too much deliberately and I freeze it. Now a meal like that, well there's no reason. I mean, that's gonna be every bit as nutritious when I unfreeze it and eat it three months later, as I often do. So for me, it's about not so much can it be good or not. It's about picking up the box and reading the ingredients. And if you can understand the ingredient list because it's written in plain English with like, it has carrots and you just see the word carrots, that's probably good. You see the word potatoes, that's probably good. You see beef, that's probably good, right? If you open the back and the list of ingredients is like three quarters chemicals, then I wouldn't really recommend eating that. Like, I don't know what those are. I'm pretty sure I don't need them. I would think twice about eating that. So I actually base my preference, the shorter the ingredient list and the more easy to read, the more I am inclined to buy the product. So it's a good guideline. Okay, my sour writes, dude, it's Uncle John. You keep saying Papa John, that's a pizza place. You work for Papa John, you are Papa John. I'm not Papa John, guys, <laughs> right? I'm not Papa John, it's not me. I would like to be Papa John. He's got a great business. He's making a lot of money, I'm sure, selling chicken in the Philippines. So I respect Papa John, I respect what he does, but I'm not him and he didn't pay me to make this video. I think you guys know this, that I shoot a couple of videos in a row when I make these videos. So I get tired and sometimes you just say in the wrong thing, the same completely the wrong thing without realizing. So good pickup. I was of course talking about Uncle John's 
fried chicken because we did a comparison video because you know Filipinos eat so much convenience store fried chicken so we're like which one's the best Uncle John's I think was my preferred convenience store chicken product so you can check that video out there if you want to see all the comparison and a pretty funny reel of me getting it totally wrong and calling the wrong name sorry guys you know make my mistakes too <laughs> all right next one comes from Vince Metz who writes wow great to hear your response to some comments the naughty and the nice I wish I could give you a million likes but I'm not a programmer <laughs> I know what you're saying so I'll give you a like and a love heart and a is that a oh that's a like you're 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 good you're okay yeah all right thank you for giving me three emoticons so if there are any programmers out there who know how to like form a bot army and send a million likes to my putting cooking without getting caught by the YouTube algorithm <laughs> whatever if you know how to do that my email address is chris at my cooking.com <laughs> nah, I'm just kidding. We've actually never bought likes on this channel. You know, a lot of so-called influencers, especially in the Philippines, I mean, they just bought their following. You can buy 5,000 likes for like $100. So we don't have the biggest followings, but actually all of our following is real. It's real people who really like the show. Our Facebook, our YouTube. YouTube's the biggest. It's uh, 36,000 at the time of shooting. Maybe higher by the time you watch this video. And our Facebook is about 25,000. Instagram is like really weak. It's only 2,000. But it's like, it's really hard to grow it's saturated, everybody's doing it. So unless you're one of those early guys or you bought your following, it's hard to have big fans. But I'm really proud of the fact that every single person who subscribed, we've never cheated, we've never faked the likes, we've never paid money for likes. We don't boost our content to get our name out there. If you're a fan of me and this show, this is an organic movement and you've gotten to know me over the last two or three years of making these videos and it's just been hard work. So I really appreciate that comment. Thank you so much for the support and for all the emoticons. Now you can go do the same at Facebook and at Instagram. I would really appreciate that too. So thanks a lot for the comment. Alexis Kodoy, he writes, uh, Sir Chris, just want to ask, how many minutes would you steam the Pitchy Pitchy? So you normally need to steam the Pitchy Pitchy for quite a long time, around 40 to 50 minutes. And the way you know it's ready is it starts to go clear. So when you first start cooking it, it looks quite, quite cloudy, like it's like a slurry, ichura, and you want to wait until it's like gone clear. That's the way to check. But typically it's somewhere between 40 and 50 minutes, depending how hard and your size of your cold and all of those things. But check out the whole recipe. Here we'll put the link up to the pitchy pitchy recipe, delicious. And I can never decide whether I prefer the one rolled in coconut or the one rolled in cheese. I'm forever going like sweet, salty, sweet, salty. And that's how you finish a box of pitchy pitchy alone. The next from It's More Fun in the Kitchen, which looks like another YouTube channel, says, why do Chris like Filipino food and make videos on YouTube? Look, the reason is it's basically a fantastic cuisine. It's underappreciated around the world. Very eclectic, it's very fusion, modern, innovative, but it's not being cooked well. So I think by cooking Filipino, you know, food well, talking about it, exposing it, it's really going to take off. I've discovered it, I love it, and I'm sharing that passion with all of you through my channel. I don't do this channel for money. I'm not like a big time endorser. I have another job, I run another business. I literally do this on my weekends because of my passion for food and cooking. So that's the reason. Next one is Bashers Go to Hell, great name. I love that, I've made a few videos about that topic. <laughs> Your comment is, I don't know how those fries pass their R&D standards, the worst product of all time. My dad can't take it, my daughter wouldn't eat it, and even the dog won't eat it. <laughs> You know, that's what we should have done. So this is uh, obviously talking about Jolly Bee strawberry fries. There are a lot of pro strawberry fries videos. I guarantee you they will pay money. Because anyone like real battle that you speak to, including myself, just like, yeah, I like Jolly Bee. I like Jolly Bee fries. You didn't need to do this. You just didn't need to put this radioactive strawberry powder on it. But you know what we should have done to really make the point? And actually, if you want to film this and send it in, we'll put it into this vlog, is get a strawberry fries and then put it in front of a dog. And if you're right, dogs just even got to walk away from it. <laughs> we could actually get 10 dogs, 10 dog bowls, put a Jollibee fries in each. And eight out of 10 dogs refuse to eat this product. <laughs> I love it. I mean, I have no animosity towards Jollibee. I just think that they really launched a very crappy product and didn't do a good job on that. They do a good job on a lot of things, but sometimes they do a bad job. There's no problem in telling them they did a bad job once in a while. A couple more comments. Can you cook pinapaitan? So yeah, we can cook pinapaitan. I did that for my book. I sort of find this recipe hard because the thought of cooking with bile is pretty repulsive actually. And I get it. I think generally I would rather make it with like a bitter soup with ampalaya. There's just something for me that feels really wrong about using liver bile to flavor a soup, but yeah, 
bitterness for me. I'd rather use uh, ampalaya. Uh, but we did it in the book for the hardcore Filipinos who were like, oh, he hasn't got papa ipan here. He needs it. Yeah, we got it. It's in my cookbook. It's coming out. And then she goes on to write, we'd love to have a copy, of course, with your signature. I'm also interested about the wine. What will match with pinak bed with lechon baboy and beef pot roast? I'll be in Manila, March, and December 2018 for my vacation. Hope to see you. So firstly, check out winery.ph. We do run events, usually around Makati City, where you can come in and do food and wine pairing. I'm at most of them. I can't guarantee I'll be the one that you attend, but I'm there probably two thirds of the time, or if not, my team is there and they'll look after you. So check out our events that we're running. We're really developing the food and wine scene here in Manila, that's for sure. As far as the book coming out later in the year, we're gonna be doing some launch in Manila, maybe or maybe not in the US, but I'll see. And the plan there is, of course, if I can do a public launch and have people come by and get a copy of these signing books, I'd love to do that. I'd love to meet some of the people who want to buy the book and follow the recipes. And lastly, your question about wine. So, Pinak Bed, quite hard for wine because you've got sweet calabasa, you've got bitter ampalaya, all the same thing. It's got to be a white wine and probably you're just looking at something like a Sauvignon Blanc or a dry Riesling. They're versatile wines. I'm not saying it'll go perfectly with a Pinak Bed. It's actually a very balanced dish and sometimes you use wine to complete the dish so it adds a missing element like a sourness, a sweetness or an acidity, but Pinak Bed has actually already got all the flavor profiles covered. So whatever you do, go with a very, very simple wine, let the food shine. Fetch on Baboy, I'd probably be looking more for a lighter style red with that. Something with a bit of tannin though, because it's quite fatty, so I find Tempranillo is actually quite a good choice if you're doing any kind of roast pork dish. Okay, let's jump on to the next one. Christopher Gokim writes, this is a really good budget recipe for the weekday, but sometimes I use oyster sauce instead of soy sauce. Can you show me how to make bagnet? Yeah, so Kineling Baboy Tital, I think is one of the quickest, easiest, and can be extremely healthy like if you use a fairly lean pork mince and less of it compared to the beans and it's absolutely delicious especially when you've got some crispy chopped garlic in there just gives it that punch but I go with a lot of snake beans it's a very healthy vegetable to be eating and keep the, the amount of pork in there quite low more for flavor than for sustenance if you know what I mean very healthy well done, and it's so fast I mean you're talking about a matter of minutes the pork mince is ready the beans I generally go for crisp I don't like to overcook them so you know two three minutes you're done Get them out, serve it, eat it fresh, nice crunch on the beans, great recipe. How to make bagnet? Uh, it's a little bit more work to do in our kitchens that I shoot in, normally we don't have the facilities, but I am looking at doing some out of town shoots soon. But we might look at doing some of the roast Filipino forks in the traditional style, so keep watching the show and hopefully we'll be able to bring you something in the coming months on that. Thanks, Cabana. Last comment comes from Charles Ong, who writes, don't trust commercials, mate. It's always a scam. Yeah, it is. I find Filipino commercials just painful to watch. I mean, I've been watching like when I'm at the gym in the daytime and it's all like the perfect household and the mom and you know, she's like, hey, I cook Filipino food for my kid and I like to use poison. And she's like, you know, adding the chemicals in, she's shaking in some chemicals, she's dropping in some factory garbage. And you're like, come on, I mean, what are we promoting here? Like we're actually promoting factory junk. I just wish the big food companies in the Philippines would say, you know what? I don't even care if they still sell those products. Like in some very limited applications, like instant noodles. I think there's some case to be made for artificial chemical flavorings. But why not start making some higher quality food? Why not start making some organic stuff? Why not start offering consumers the choice and just see if they decide. Now, you know it might cost a bit more and will probably be sold at a slightly higher amount, but at least have a small range, test it out, give Filipinos the choice to eat better. Because what bothers me the most is just that right now there isn't a choice. It is so hard to get access to fresh, healthy ingredients in Philippine supermarkets. And I think that, and the commercials are the same. They might still have to offer all of the stuff they've been offering for decades, you know, the factory ingredients. But why not do one commercial, have one product line, and just start testing the waters. Are Filipinos ready to start eating better, eating healthier? Let's give them a choice and see. And work with our customers to try and give better choices at the best possible prices we can for consumers. That's my challenge to all Filipino big food companies out there. Advertise better, produce better, do better for your customers than you are. I'm Chris Rabano. I'm going to see you guys all in my next videos. Leave me a comment with anything that jumps into your mind after watching this. Love to hear from you all. Facebook page, you know where it is. Become a Cabano over there. We have a special group for our top Cabanos. And of course, drop me an email if you want to pick up a copy of the book later this year when it comes out at chrisatmaputinkoking.com. Subscribe, like, share, hit that little bell button so you never miss another episode of Food and Fun with me. I will see you next time. Bye now.